Man, gather around. OG Silk back here. And today I'm going to talk to you guys specifically about some tales of victory and glory that will show you how a few strong men decided to band together and even stand and fight and die to protect masculinity, dude, from this gynocentric world, bro. And not to let their homeboys and sons and nephews and friends turn into wimpy beta male bench warmer soy boy man giants. Hey guys, man. I'm able to make a video today because, uh, unfortunately for me, I got hurt on set, man. I was on a movie set, man, as you guys know. Those of you who are new to my channel, I'm OG Silverback. I did, uh, I got sentenced to 26 years in prison, which I ended up doing 10, most of it level four maximum security, majority of it in the shoe program, segregated housing unit. And from that isolation, I developed a mentality of stoicism to help me see the reality and not be fooled by the stuff that's going on. Like magicians be like, hey, look over here, look over there. I just learned to focus on what's important with reaching my goals. And I want to share that with you guys. Hey, so anyway, guys, I was on set, you know, I, I do stunts and um, I do martial arts fight scenes because my acting skills are not at the level where I can be like a lead actor and to read roles like to be or not to be. That is the question. But I'm constantly working on myself. I'm going to acting school, dude, and I'm taking acting lessons, bro, and I'm doing all kind of method acting and improv so that one day, very soon, before the end of this year, I'm not going to be doing stunts and uh, fight scenes anymore. Matter of fact, I think I might have retired from that. So anyway, man, I hurt my back and I hurt my hip, dude, because what happens is you, you be working these 16 to 18 hour days. It's crazy. But, you know, for any of these producers, directors watching, I'm not complaining. I'm just sharing with the, the, the layman out there what it takes to be an actor. So anyway, uh, I had just did one movie, so I knew another movie was coming, so I, I tried to catch up on my workouts, and I, I did what's called a triple up. So, normally I only lift weights once a week, once a day. I, you know, I do my kickboxing and my boxing, and I do my Muay Thai, and, and I do my movie martial arts fight scenes, and then I lift weights. But I knew I was going to be on set for the next two weeks, working 16 to 18 hour days, so I did a triple up in the gym. I got up in the morning, ran. Did a little bit of kickboxing, you know, did some lower body, you know, came home, caught up on some paperwork, took a little nap, went back down to the gym, did a little bit of boxing. Then I did like my torso and then I came home, caught up on some bills and stuff. And then I went to my Muay Thai class, did some Muay Thai. And then uh, afterwards, I did some shoulders and arms, bro. So to, to say the least, I was fried. And then what happened was... uh. They called me in earlier to the set than I was supposed to go. I was supposed to go the next day. They called me in and said, hey, we're doing a fight scene this evening. Come in. So then I just I took some protein shakes with me, went in there. And, dude, I'm going up and down the steps, sitting down, squatting, fighting, <coughs> moving. Move over here, big man. Do it this way. Do it that way. Hey, man. I threw my lower back out, dude, because, you know, when you do lower back exercises, you normally should rest like, at least 24 to 48 hours before you do anything strenuous with your back, right? So anyway, long story short, I threw my back out, bro, and I just want to share this with you because I got a very interesting story I want to tell you guys that leads into the topic of today's video. So the video for today, guys, is <coughs> to survive maximum security prison, learn your role and never break character. Here on my channel, guys, I talk specifically about maximum security prison because there's different levels of prison. And a lot of youngsters go into these level one, level two uh, fire camps and kumbaya daycare camps and all this stuff. And they think prison's a joke because they still, you see a lot of these prison channels, they're still talking about smoking weed or getting high or doing lean or they got their cell phones in prison or they're moving drugs in prison or whatever they're doing. they just like, it's a little mini vacation because you go in there for about a year or two, right? Maximum security prison is different for three very important reasons. Three very important reasons. Reason number one, 
is you got guys that have life and they're never getting out and lifers have a very different perspective and a mentality and a different way they look at reality. A lifer is just trying to get a program going and a program is just a way that you get through the madness of being incarcerated, right? So that's where, you know, the military helped me because I'm very regimented. <clears throat> I do the same things every day, dude. The only way I know it's a different day is I check my calendar. I'll get a phone call from my agent or I'll get a text from somebody telling me, oh, you know, don't don't forget to be over here today because I, I do the same thing every day. A lot of women, when I was into the dating or whatever you guys want to call it, they would call me like, Oh, dude, you're so uh, what are they? You're so regimented. You're like a robot, and I'd be like, well, that's why in my bank account I got many more zeros than you got behind yours, lady. Matter of fact, you can't even pay half your bills most of the time. So anyway, um, and that helped me in in prison because the lifers want to do a regimented program where they don't have to think about time. You don't want to think about time. You just want to do it because if you're never getting out, what does time matter? You just want to know when it's time to go to the weight pal time to go to school or time to go to work, watching your favorite TV show, time to butt rape somebody, whatever it is that your program is, you know what I mean? Time to get, uh, time to go to chow, whatever it is. Here's lesson number two. Maximum security prison, dude, um, aside from having the lifers who are in there for heinous crimes like murder and, and rape and cannibalism and kidnapping and torture and body dismemberment, all that stuff, you got some very serious felon dudes up in there, like dudes in maximum security prison. They're not in there. For, <laughs> they're not in there for shoplifting, man, or <clears throat> you know, stealing a Twinkie bar, or you know, low-level drug charges, dude, or you know that kind of stuff, bro. They're in there for some serious stuff: armed robbery, kidnapping, murder, rape, mayhem, body disfigurement, body dismemberment. They got some savages in there, dude. And number three, which I think is the most important, there's a different level of seriousness, dude. Like, I've seen dudes lose their life over a poker game, dude, or dominoes, bro, or chess, or arguing over a football game, or, you know, debating about which lady's hotter on TV, and just silly stuff, because everything is so serious. And the reason I, I had to, I had to tell you guys about this is because I learned I learned some very barbaric behavior in prison <coughs> that have cost me jobs, relationships, friendships, heck, even money, dude. Because I t I'm I'm so serious about everything, but through my counseling and uh, medication, and uh, really wanting to become a better person through acting. And uh, I just learned through acting, like, you got to be very social. You have to be very caring, loving, and, you know what I mean? You can't be quick to anger. So I've been developing duplicitous behavior. Like, I had it in, I had it when I got out of prison. The German dude taught me that. But I've really taken it to the next level, to the, to the point where I'm now merging into one person. So let's just say, uh, let's just say, for example, this represents barbarism and savagery, right? You, you you solve everything with the sword and violence, right? And let's say this over here represents civility and kindness and love, man, and and being social and, and caring about people. I'm merging myself to become in the middle, dude. I don't want to be a savage barbarian, and I don't want to be an intellectually wimpy little soft soy boy mangina. I want to be in the middle. I want to be with the guy Jordan Peterson calls, you know, the warrior philosopher. And the reason I bring that up, guys, <clears throat> before I get into the topic of this video, which is telling me about maximum security prison, I want to tell you what happened to me today. So I threw my back out, dude, and I, I was on, I've been on set for the last couple of weeks working 16 to 18, dude, 20 hour days. I even worked a 24 hour day. And being I'm not in the union, there's nothing I can do about it. I can just choose not to work. But I choose to work because I'm paying my dues. And I'm going to get to the bright lights in Hollywood. So help me God, man. As long as I got strength in my body. Because I'm not a quitter. But let me tell you what happened. So I hurt my back. I've been on set. So I um, I needed to get some gas. 
and I need to get some food because my back's messed up. So what I do is I just want to go home, take some muscle relaxer, pain pills, just lay in the bed and have me some snacks, like some, some nuts and some fruit and some water, maybe some Gatorade, maybe some protein bars, some protein shakes, you know, just so I can lay around until I can get into the, see the VA. Cause with the VA, you got to make an appointment, dude. Even if you're in severe pain, they don't have emergency service. You got to make an appointment. So anyway, I went to the store. So you know how you, you park, right? And you got to walk to the store I mean, inside of the entrance. So I'm coming out. And it was this very entitled lady, man. And, you know, I'm walking slow because my back's messed up. I'm bent over. I'm taking my time. I don't want to throw it out. Like, it's very gingerly. So I'm walking really slow. So what I, what I like is when I'm in my car, and in California, pedestrians have the right of way. I'm not sure about the laws in Vegas because I got here and I've been working. But I'm pretty sure they got the right of way. So whenever I'm in my car and I see a pedestrian, I give them the right of way. But I like it when they go, oh, no, you go ahead because they know that my car can go faster than what they're going to do. And they're, you know, they're just being, um, you know, they're just being a social citizen. They're being a good citizen. They go, oh, go right ahead. So then I can go with their permission. So I was walking back to my car <coughs> with my groceries and just hobbling along, right? So this lady's this lady's pulling up to the intersection. I just trying to be a good Samaritan, and so I waved her through. And dude, she rolls down her window, and this is what she yells to me: "I don't need your permission to go. I'll go when I'm good and ready. You don't you tell me when to go." And so, uh, you know, my back's hurting, guys, and I was just like, you know, here's here's my inner dialogue. Um, I was just trying to be a good citizen and, uh, I'm walking really slow and I'm hurt and I wanted you to go past so that you won't have to wait on me. And then also I didn't want you to feel afraid, you know, cause you got a big dude walking up on your car. Cause with our modern society, dude, there's carjackings, there's people abducting people. I'm a big dude, scary looking dude. A lot of women, man, are. When they look at me, they say I'm mean looking. I don't think I look mean. I just think I got a beat up face, but they get scared if they don't know me. So I try to go out of my way to be an affable dude. So she rolls the windows down. You don't, I don't need you to tell me when to go. I don't need your permission. You don't tell, I'll go and I'm good and ready. You go ahead. And I was like, this is what I said in this tone. I was like, lady, I'm, I'm just trying to be a good dude. Well, I don't need you to be a good nothing. You just go ahead about your business. And I was just like, lady, I was just trying to help you out here because I'm walking slow. I don't need your excuses. Just get up out of my face. So at that moment, guys, the reason I'm sharing this with you, and it goes back to the title of this video, to survive maximum security prison, you must learn your role and learn your role and never break character. So my new character is that of a law-abiding citizen, a stoic dude, a charismatic, suave, sophisticated dude. I don't let people like this lady or the half light skinned dude who, who wrecked my IT career and, and talked about, you know, raping my daughter and raping my, my ex wife and just heinous stuff, bro. That if a man was to say that to my face, um, stoic or not, bro, he'd probably end up meeting Jesus or Buddha or Allah because there's certain things you don't say to a man that you're talking about. Raping a man's daughter, raping his wife, bro. Come on, man. You, that that I don't care who you are, how law-abiding you are. You don't say that to a dude like me. Now, somebody can say that to you and live. Hey, God help you, cause you. Hey, turn the cheek like Jesus taught you. I I believe in I believe in fighting tyranny with tyranny. So anyway, I thought to myself, you know, I was starting to feel this little. I get a little tickle on my stomach, dude, and then it heats up and then it rises up and I get red. So I've learned these, um, I've learned these coping behaviors. When I get the little tickle on my stomach, I start breathing deep. It's called tantric breathing. I go, so I breathe in really deep and I hold it for a few seconds and I let it out slow. And it helps me to push down the, let's just call it the inner demon. So at that moment, I said to myself, this lady, man, she thinks she's so tough talking from her car. I wanted to say to her, hey, you know what? You're talking all that. This is what I wanted to say. I'm telling you in my head. I said, I wanted to say, hey, you're talking all that bad dude gangster stuff from inside your car. 
Why don't you step out of your car and say it to my face if you're so bold and lady? But then I thought to myself, man, who am I? I'm a stoic dude. I'm a scholar, gentleman, philosopher, king. I don't let peasants, man, steal my joy, bro, or control my emotions. So I just went ahead, man. I just said, hey, whatever. And I just kept walking because here's what's going on, bro. It could end up in three ways, bro. If I'd have said that to her, she could have <laughs> ran me over with her car like the coward she was. Or B, she could have called the cops and said that I made terrorist threats, which I made sure to keep my tone down. Or C, she could have got out of the car with a pistol. Either of those options weren't really good for me. I don't want to go into D, E, and F because... You know, I'm trying to be monetized here on YouTube, so I don't want to talk about thoughts. I was thinking of a person that is trying to bully me and aggress upon me. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, an alien, a Bigfoot. Nobody bullies me, dude. I don't like that. But, you know, what I'm trying to say, I'm working on my, I learned my role, so I stayed in character. And why that's as important, guys, is when you go to maximum security prison, dude, all eyes are on you. Like from the time you hit that, from the time you get off the bus and they open up those pearly gates, was well, not really pearly gates, it's steel gates. Like that. And you walk up in there, everybody on the tier is looking because they're looking to see if they got family members, um, uh, fellow gang members, uh, enemies, or somebody they know from their hood, right? So when you get to maximum security prison, you must learn your role early and never break characters like the movie Django. There's a movie called Django with Jamie Foxx. If you guys haven't watched it, I recommend it to you. And it just shows you how this bounty hunter dude freed the slave and they was going around and he was letting the slave dude kill white people back in the day when, you know, it wasn't allowed to do. But it shows how he had to play these different characters. And what I'm saying is in maximum security prison, when you go in there, in your mind, you have to determine what kind of a person or what kind of a role you're going to have. Like me, for example, I was a monk, man. They called me the warrior monk. And here's, here's why I came up with that philosophy. Because when I was at maximum, I was at level five maximum security San Quentin. Well, first of all, I started in the county jail when I was incarcerated. Hey, guys, ever since I was a little kid, I do martial arts every day. Those of you who are on my Patreon, you know, at the $25 tier and above with the coaching calls, I've spoke to you um, at lengths about it because I, what I do is I sandwich my day, guys. What that means is I can't control the chaos and the madness of the world and what's going on in the Ukraine and the recession and the shortage of the baby formula and how women want to be men and men want to be women and all this stuff, bro. I can't control none of that. All I can control is me. So what I do is I start my day off with some good book reading and some prayer, meditation, and exercise. My form of exercise is martial arts, dude, and stretching. That's what makes me happy. And then I start my day. Of course, you guys know I talk to you about my boxing, the kickboxing, and Muay Thai, and stunt school, and all this stuff, and my weightlifting. But I start my day off with some good prayer, meditation, and a nice workout, dude. Start my day off. So this is a sandwich. And so my day starting off good. Whatever happens during the day, dude, like the craziness on the movie sets, this crazy ladies trying to aggress upon me when they can't whoop me, dude. They can't even, man, most women can't outshoot me, bro. I'm not, but I'm not trying to go down that path, guys. But women nowadays are so aggressive, they got a chip on their shoulder, dude, because they so upset with the, 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 the Chads and the Tyrones and the Jorge's and the Fernandos blowing their backs out in the wands. And just leaving them, just pumping them and dumping them. So then they take it out on beta male bench warmer soy boys, man. And regular dudes like me, man. But I'm not the one, bro. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to play, uh, I'm not going to play therapist and a doormat for what some other dude did. No. You know what I mean? I don't, tr personally, I don't treat women bad. So you, I'm not going to have a woman treat me bad because some other dude treated her bad. I'm a man, therefore, ergo I. All men are evil, so I'm going to treat OG Silverback evil because this dude treated me evil. No, I'm not that dude. So anyway, uh, I portrayed, I, I played a monk in the reason being because when I got to the county jail, 
um, I was fortunate because um, a few of the officers or whatever you call them, the guards, or I don't know what they call them in the county jail, the sheriffs, I think they're sheriffs. A few of the sheriffs I was in the military with actually, I used to do martial arts with. So on their shift, they would allow me to practice martial arts. Oh, back to the bookend. So then at the end of the day, I, and when I get home, I read some good books, man. I meditate and I pray and I stretch because I've been martial art in my day out. So I stretch prior to going to bed, shower, and then I visualize my life that I want to have. You know, if you want more further information, hit me up on my Patreon at the twenty-five dollar level for a coaching call. So let's revert back to prison. When I was in the county jail, I was doing my same program. I got up in the morning. Unfortunately. I didn't have anything to read but the Bible. And, you know, I'm not trying to convert anybody, guys, or anything like that. I'm, a, I'm an agnostic, meaning that I believe, but I don't really have a certain denomination. I do believe in a higher power. There's many different stories, but they all agree there's something greater than us that created us. You guys can call it aliens. You can call it your, uh, what, it, what do the Indians call it? Our forefathers, whatever you want to call it. I just know there's a power higher than me and I tap into that when I need it. And maybe it's a placebo effect, maybe it's faith. I just tap into it to give me strength to be the best version of myself. So in the county jail, I get up, I read the Bible, because that's the only book they had there, and I do my martial arts. Unfortunately for me, I didn't know you couldn't do martial arts out in the open. They don't like it because, you know, first of all, guys that want to learn martial arts from you are Two, a guy wants to test your martial arts. Or three, the, the, the sheriffs feel intimidated. So when my former military buddies weren't on their shift, the other correctional officers would tell me, hey, yeah, man, you can't work out like that. You know, when you're fresh off the street, bro. And I just, I, I'm not used to people telling me what to do. And I was like, well, what's going to happen? So then after they beat some sense into me, man, with, you know, pepper spray and knots upside of my head and handcuffed me and put me into the shoe. I found out two things. Number one, don't mouth off to officers, bro. Because no matter how much martial arts, you know, they got billy clubs and pepper spray. And they don't fight fair. They gang up on you like gang members. And number two, I like to shoot. Why? I get to do my martial arts because I had enemies in the county jail. I had people coming in. I did some heinous stuff. It was just a war zone for me, dude. So what I figured out was <coughs> in prison, you get a religious preference, right? No, so if you're a Catholic, they got to let you out for Catholic Mass. If you're a Christian, you got to be allowed to go to the Christian church if you're a Muslim, a Buddhist. So I told him, man, I was a Buddhist monk, man. And my prayer meditation was, you know, Tai Chi. And what people don't understand, a lot of people don't study martial arts, they don't understand that Tai Chi can be weaponized, right? You know, it's just like Capoeira, which is a dancing martial arts. They, they learned that to fool the, uh, I think it was the French that they, they were actually practicing martial arts, just like a lot of uh, a lot of Japanese martial arts when they used to be plowing the rice and stuff. They learned to use those sickles as weapons. So I would just do Tai Chi, <laughs> the tai chi on the yard and they'd say, oh man, he's a Buddhist monk. So I kept that character, dude. I kept the character. And what I'm saying to you, when you get to maximum security prison, when you first get there, you gotta understand, dude. Are you gonna, are you gonna, you know, you're gonna play a role as a warrior? Are you gonna be a wise man? Are you gonna be a slick dude, a flim flammy dude, trying to get over on people? Are you gonna be a predator? Are you gonna be a torpedo? Are you gonna be a shot caller? Are you gonna be the one of these dudes that's running in the middle of the pack? I call them the invisible people in prison. Me myself, if I had to do it over again, I'd probably be an invisible dude in the pack. And that's just like a social dude that, you know what I mean? You're not a warrior, you're not a savage, you're not a torpedo, you're not a shot caller. You're just part of the prison population, just doing your thing. You know what I mean? You, you kind of be more like a Jay Williams kind of dude. If you know guys aren't familiar with Jay Williams, go over his channel. He's got some really awesome storytelling abilities. But you'd be a dude like Jay Williams. You know, he's a social dude and he he's in the middle of the pack. Don't get me wrong, if somebody was to try to aggress upon him, he stand up for himself, but he's not like a Wes Watson who's always raising his hand like to put in work on somebody. You know what I mean? So that's very important because to survive, once you learn your role, right, you just study different, you know, because first when you get to prison, you got to go to reception 
and you're not out in general population. So if you if you're smart like me, you look out through your cell window and you just watch how the inmates you know how people, you know how people, people watch at the park or at the zoo or at the club or I mean downtown or whatever. I would people watch the guys inside of the day room and I people watch them on the yard and I look at their behaviors and I look at their activities. And then I figured out, man, that the Buddhist monk was the best one for me because I always was reading books, bro, because books helped me with my claustrophobia, dude. I was trapped. And most of the time I was in the shoe, like a large majority of the time I was in the shoe, segregated housing unit because, dude, I handled everything with violence. I'm not saying that was a smart thing to do, but to be transparent now that I'm living my best life, I was actually afraid that somebody would take my life from prison because I unfortunately um, was into a lot of gunplay on the streets and um uh, I'm I'm very good with I'm very good with the firearm and I'm very good with knives and swords. And reason being I'm not some mystical guy. I just practice a lot. So uh <laughs> unfortunately I was involved in a couple of the gun battles and uh the the guys on the other end couldn't shoot as good as I did, but then, you know, the stories throughout the neighborhood was whatever. And so people want retaliation. So, uh, you know, when I was incarcerated, I couldn't be a, a middle of the pack social dude because I had enemies. There's nowhere to run. So the Buddhist monk thing, the books, allowed me to escape my claustrophobia. And books would take me outside of prison. I just read every book I can get my hands on. First books I was reading, it was like law books. And law books, if you read law books, there's like a lot of stories about habeas corpus or wave versus row or whatever, whatever. And it tells you a story and then within there, they put laws and penal codes and stuff. So I was reading a lot of law books, dude. I was just reading a lot of books from um, Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, religious books, man. Um, you know, I was reading a lot of mathematic books, English books. I was just trying to reverse from the badness I had into me up in prison. So anyway, I just think that's important because if you really want to survive maximum security prison, what I mean by survive, don't end up with a life sentence by killing somebody. Don't end up getting your booty hole raped open, dude. And don't end up becoming hooked on drugs, but just end up coming out of into society, associated with positive people like me, you know, reinventing yourself. The main thing, the main lesson from this video is that uh, once you learn your role, never, ever, 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 ever break character. And I think Almighty God or the Holy Spirit or the powers that be, the aliens, whatever power is greater than me, I thank him or her today that I did not lose my temper and break character and rip the lady's head off. And shines it down her neck to let her know. Watch your mouth when you're in the presence of a true barbarian.